Yo, what's going on guys, your boy Ooch, and back in once again, and yeah, we're here with uh, probably one of the very few Attack on Titan reviews um, that we will have to do on the channel. I just finally got a chance to read in that last chapter, and I wanted to give you guys my complete thoughts on that, and I guess to round up my overall thoughts of the series since, you know, I started watching and then reading the manga, so without further ado, let's just get right into it. So a part of me is just kind of like in disbelief, like, wow, ever since like 2008, 2009, around that time, I didn't even know that Attack on Titan existed. I like kind of like barely heard it in passing and I didn't really hear of it until I got to, to college a few years later. And I heard it through the murmurs from my friends that were into anime and manga at the time. And they were telling me that like Shingeki no Kyojin is like one of their favorites to read. And I was like, yeah, well, I gotta, I gotta get around to it. And then eventually the anime came out and i never saw something as crazy as attack on titan i never would have thought i would have expected to see something in the likes of attack on titan it was so unique to me and such a crazy plot and um like everything that it introduced i was just like kind of taken back in a way and that was a really good thing and i was just like man it can only, I, I, it can only get crazy from here like attack on titan people used to literally compare it and say that this was the rival to walking dead with the amc show which i i personally didn't um a lot of people used to say that that was japan's answer but i i, I feel like there's way too many differences between the two so that i'm not even gonna get into that but i do bring all that up because one of the points that i wanted to kind of bring to light is do you guys remember when it was around like episode four where aaron just died right we thought like they actually killed the main character and i thought for that that was probably one of the craziest things I've ever seen in any show. Like I said, nothing like this I've ever seen before. And it really stuck with me, and it definitely stuck with my brother Ooch because he and I, when we were watching it, we were, like, freaking out, screaming. And Attack on Titan is actually one of the few anime that I've actually watched several times over, and it's very rare for me to do that. Now, back when we didn't even know when Season 2 was coming out, Season one, I probably watched at least a good five times over. And I know I know Brother Ooze was watching that all the time on repeat because if something's that good, you just kinda have, you know, no choice but to continuously watch it over and over. But there's a reason why I bring up this and that's because it has everything to do with the final chapter. And the final chapter, obviously if you can already tell by now, this is again a very, very big spoiler warning. If you have not read the manga and you haven't especially read the last chapter, here's your big spoiler warning right now because we're obviously going to have to get into it. And I'm going to give you guys my complete thoughts. Um, and I, I feel like maybe you might be able to tell from, like, my mood right now because I'm kind of, like, you know, like, I'm not, I'm not like, excited. I'm kind of upset. And I'm not, I'm not upset with the ending so much as how I'm thinking of the show overall. But I really do feel like... I don't want to say the ending fell flat. I just I kind of I kind of feel like it's unfortunate that things had to play out the way that they did. And I'm not even saying from like a writing standpoint, but I'm kind of just saying from a story standpoint overall because it's unfortunate from seeing how Aaron really changed and grew as a character and I mean, well, you could argue that the, you know, his Titan power that he obtained with the founding titan and you know all of that could have possibly just really gotten to his head really gotten to his mentality and of course it brought along the end result in his death and this time it seems like he's he's gone for good it's not like you know how he died in, in episode four of the anime where he was eaten and we all thought he was done but it turns out that Mans was literally the attack titan the entire time and ended up like, you know, becoming a weapon for all of the soldiers. This time around, Eren obviously turned into this ginormous, odd shaped looking titan that would have really destroyed the whole world. He he was he was planning to to flatten the planet, like he said. And at the same time, he knew in the back of his mind that this was the only way to get himself to be stopped and for people 
to, I guess, praise his friends that would be the ones that would end up stopping him. And that, uh, and also, la finally, lastly but not least, this would be what would put an end to the Titans as we know it. And this is where I kind of start, like, kind of shifting gears a little bit with my opinion overall because the chapter starts with him having a conversation with Armin, and they're, like, in, you know that imaginary space where it's like nothing and everything it's the past it's the future it's everything all encompassed in one it's very convoluted and a little confusing when they do things like this but it was obviously one of those send-off moments where they had their last like conversation before the reality kicked right back in and Yukasa walked out with man's head in, in her arms and it was a nice conversation to say the least but at the same time it also revealed some things that really didn't make too much sense to me because at this point when Armin had questioned Eren don't you want Mikasa to like move on to find someone else to be happy to be with and he admitted no he actually had a very awkward character change Especially considering that this is the finale. And he treated Mikasa a set way ever since they were kids. The exact same way. Even when they had this man in a room. And he was trying to turn on everybody and make it known that he really was on his own side. And if you weren't, then you better just stay clear of him. He knew and he, and he tested this in front of everybody. He said that. No one's going to hurt me. And you know why? Because he always had Mikasa to defend him no matter what. Even when he straight up said to her face and around everyone else that was in that room that she was always destined to just protect him be just because that's just how the lineage goes back. If you look at the ancestry, that's just how her clan dealt with the the people of royal with the people of royal blood and of course like he has that you know in his you know he has that as a part of him right even after all that you know he has treated her the same way for all these years and yet he brings out this side of him that we literally never see before now if you ask me i thought that was really out of place in a way because there was never a tease or a moment where he showed a sign of actually caring about Mikasa in a romantic way, in an endearing way, in a way that, you know, they, you know, you, you, you would have, you would have felt that he actually wanted to be with her at some point in time. And oddly enough, you know, he blurts this out, but then he realizes that this is the only way like he 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 has to die, even though he did say he wished that, you know, it could have been different. But he at that point, you know, shared with Armin that this was the only way to rid of rid all the Titans of from existence so that you guys don't ever have to be afraid of, you know, Titans. So that way the aliens don't even have that kind of power anymore. And. And that is what it is. Combining all of those elements with just the fact that this was literally it and they had a three-year time skip and during the time skip they share that the people of the world are basically still on edge in a way like they're not really over all of the occurrences that took place all of those years ago i mean like i said they're all on edge and it's almost as if like i don't know it's it's, it's almost as if like if someone's just waiting for someone to make a move, for the war to continue. But realistically, the war is over. There is nothing to be feared of. There is nothing to fight over except, you know, probably land or something like that. But, you know, there shouldn't really be Marlans and Eldians. There shouldn't be that divide anymore. But yet they still live like that. And Armin and a couple of the others from the, the from, Marle, from Marley actually seem like they created some kind of peace group. Um, in order to kind of push for, you know, people to accept them, that they're not demons anymore. They're not, you know, the island devils or anything like this. And then, of course, in a nice kind of touch, you know, we see Mikasa 
at the end, you know, by the, the that that famous tree that they always hung out by, and they looked up at you know the sky at all the time, and of course that's where they buried Aaron's head probably, and you know she still like talks to him as if he was still there, but then I like this I like this um this scene that happened it was very symbolic where a bird comes in and literally yanks the scarf that Aaron gave her as a kid and it flies away. And then she kind of smiles at the end too. And that's how the story ends. That is literally how Attack on Titan ends. So I don't know if you want to consider that a way to maybe mean that this would this would be her first step to possibly moving on and getting on with her life. Um, or, you know, it can just be like one of those symbolic meanings that, you know, Aaron is literally no more, you know, and he hasn't been for the, for the last three years considering with the story. But the one other thing I wanted to talk about is how they left the editor note at the end of the chapter and they literally say that we're just getting started. So I'm not sure if that is a way to tease the fans that there could possibly be something else to follow and um I, it just makes me a little confused because it's like if they do continue the story my one thought is that i can see them doing some kind of like grand movie because i don't think attack on time really has had any actual movies outside of those crappy live action versions and then the summary movies of each season I think it would be really interesting if they actually do decide to have some kind of like Attack on Titan follow up movie where, you know, there's no obviously the world is they got rid of the Titans, the cycle's done. There's none of that, but there might be someone along the way that maybe wants to bring that back. And my thing is I just feel like since Aaron was basically like the last one, he was like the last one that especially have the founding Titan within him. I feel like if they were to ever bring it back, they would most likely have some kind of plot or some kind of, you know, something where he might be brought back in some way. I mean, this isn't the first time we have seen Aaron get literally decapitated. I mean, he got shot, his head fell off, and the the powers that be that, you know, resided within him kept him alive, pretty much, overall, you know. And the fact that, obviously, he was beheaded, it's been three years, he's, bar he's been buried, you know. One could argue, I'm like, okay, well, there's no way he's going to be coming back from that. But, I mean, you never know with anime and manga, man. They can like, literally make up something, or something could go along the lines and uh you know something could change make a big a huge change and there you go boom then we're all back to square one all over again so my old my overall thoughts right of the chapter itself the finale it was okay um i honestly was so confused as to how i even imagined this to end in the first place i really didn't know with with given with with everything that's been happening and you know I'm sure if there's no anime onlys that are watching this review right now, um, I'm sure they're not even predicting exactly what's gonna happen you know because all the events that led up to this very end, I had I didn't see coming at all I I just I had no expectations I I literally just didn't know Attack on Titan is one of those very hard to predict kind of series it's not like your average shonen i'm not saying that attack on titan is a shonen i'm just saying for example shonens can be very predictable right but attack on titan being like kind of like a thriller a little bit of, i really really wouldn't say horror but it has a lot of elements that you don't really find in your typical shonens um, I, it was very hard to predict. And I think that that was one of its charms. I think that was definitely one of its reasons that kept people hooked. And, you know, they took it very seriously. Like, yo, 
don't know what's gonna happen. Like th- th- this is this is, this is one of the defining things about Attack on Titan. One of the traits that helped it become such a huge deal in the minds of like many fans alike. And yeah, I mean, I feel like part of me is just, I feel like I'm just really upset that it's over. You know, like I was there when it started. And it was, like I said, it was so good that like I kept watching season one, had no idea when season two was coming. Literally, I feel like it was like four years we had to wait for season two. And then it was like a couple more years or so. Or, I don't really remember exactly the timeline when between two and three. But that was when it started to become a little bit more regulated as far as the releases went. And of course, the manga, you know, was releasing once a month ever since. Um... And yeah, like, it's just really crazy how it's just another series that I kind of saw from its beginning, and now I lived to obviously see it end. And it's just, it's just one of those things, man. It's just really weird. I don't know if any of you guys can relate to how I'm feeling, but it's just like, you know, you get so accustomed to getting to the next chapter the following month, you know. And to know that's just not it's just not gonna be there anymore. It's just like I don't know, it's just weird. But the, as far as the show is concerned, the series overall is definitely gonna still go down as one of the greatest of all time. Um, I could definitely see this in a lot of people's top tens, um, at least especially in the in honorable mentions. Uh, Attack on Titan definitely changed the game for me. It changed the game for a lot of people. Open it opened eyes to a lot of uh, people in general. And, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's just weird. I mean, but in a sense, it's not really over because of course we still have the second part of the anime to come out because, you know, I'm sure a lot of you guys, some of y'all that don't read the manga, you guys really thought that they was not going to come back with that. Come on, bro. Telling you guys, I hope you guys enjoy that skit, by the way. Um, more skits will come, um, in time. So, uh, but yeah, I wanted to do this kind of like real talk kind of uh type of style for you know something like this because you know videos like this i feel like you know with the least amount of edits to them you guys can really feel like the authenticity behind like the words that i'm trying to like you know have reach out to you guys through the screen and uh hope you like i can really feel like where i'm coming from because you know, I ho- I just hope that all of this is captured properly. Um, I, 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 yeah, it's like I'm just I I if you ask me how how I would have ended it, I, I honestly couldn't even tell you. Me personally, I know that I would have loved to see some kind of crazy outcome where Aaron would have been able to still live, but you know, unfortunately, you can't really always have that happen. It seems like in most stories, well, maybe not most, but definitely some, it seems like in order for something to really weigh down on its viewers and readers, you have to have something of some kind of utmost big significance die. (laughs) Like, you look at Avengers, 11 years Basically, the same amount of time Attack on Titan has been now, right? 11 years of build up all these movies. Iron Man, Tony Stark, probably one of the greatest movie comic book characters in the history of history. And of course, at the end game, man's had to sacrifice it all. He had to be the one. And he didn't. And I feel like, you know, had he survived, which I would have loved, of course, he pro like I feel like that movie would have wouldn't have been as as great as it was, as memorable, I feel like. Because that death had a lot of meaning, you know. But you know, everyone has their arguments and how that could have been prevented, and I'm sure that definitely didn't happen in the comics, but you know. As far as the MCU is concerned, that was something that really weighed down. That movie had me so emotionally invested. By the time that that happened on my screen, I was I couldn't believe it. I was in tears. 
And that's how you know they did their job right. As far as Attack on Titan is concerned, I feel like Hajime Isayama and his team definitely did a very, very, very outstanding job with this series to be able to pull in readers and to basically kind of in a way change the world in the sense that it was a it was a series that when it hit it hit the ground running and it took it took the industry by storm to where people like I said earlier were trying to say that this was Japan's answer to the walking dead and I think that's crazy to even say I wouldn't compare them just because I think I think they're just too different but I mean yeah, I, I just can't believe it's over. I can't believe it's over. Um, and I honestly wish, and I hope, I really do hope that there is something more. Um, some kind of, you know, continuation or maybe not like a full-on series, but something like, you know, a movie or, I don't know, something something to accompany of this great piece of work. Because I, I, I truly do feel like, you know, all great things must come to some kind of an end. But if they're that good, I also do believe that there's always room to add more to the greatness, as long as it's done right, of course. So, and it's obviously it's not even just to you know just about making money thing, because clearly at this rate, if you if you stamp anything with Attack on Titan on it, it'll most likely sell over other things. I mean, that's kind of how I mean. Look at Dragon Ball. You know, still around, manga's still coming out every month. Still waiting on everyone's still waiting on the anime to return. It's almost inevitable, and we know it's happening. Um, so, yeah, you know, I, it was a good run. I'll definitely say that it was definitely a good run. And I hope you guys stuck with me throughout this entire uh, real talk review, whatever this really is. Stay tuned because I will have more um, more similar videos like this. I feel like doing the real talk format probably helps uh, with pumping out some more stuff more content related things like this and uh yeah man well, let me know what you guys thought about this uh with the, with the finale and the, and the series overall i mean feel free to just you know write as much as you want in the comments you know i don't think there's really a character limit does any do any of you like feel how i'm feeling like do you guys get what i mean are you happy it's over how would you have ended it differently do you think or anticipate there to be anything afterwards let me know in the comments below like share subscribe hit me up on twitter all that good stuff supporting links are going to be in the description as always guys make sure you guys are taking care of yourselves please may the power protect keep it locked loaded right here on this channel stay safe stay clean and stay inside i'll see you guys next time